So, you want to buy a laser. But what laser to get? Sort of like buying a nail gun at your big box retailer. There's so many of them. How do you know which one to get? What wattage? Can you move the bed up and down? What software does it work with? Can you network it? How will I know if it'll work for my needs? Well, I'm gonna let you know how I figured out what laser to get for me, and hopefully that'll help you get the right laser for what you need it for. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again, so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video on the shelf. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, leggings, and phone cases. Some of the things that I considered when making my choice for a laser was cost. I don't have an unlimited budget, but I didn't want to spend more than $2,000 and I didn't. I wanted to make sure that I had enough power to cut various types of materials and all these material and all these lasers that you're going to buy on eBay are going to be CO2 lasers. None of them are going to have the capability to cut metal. You can cut pretty much anything else other than metal with these lasers. If you are going to be cutting metal or want to cut metal, then you're not going to be buying one of these CO2 lasers on eBay. The other thing to consider was how big of material could you cut? And my laser is a 50 watt laser and it has a 300 by 500 millimeter bed. Uh, so that was big enough for what I needed to do. You take a look at these other lasers that are 40 watt lasers. They have a much smaller bed size. I believe it's 200 by 300 millimeters is the typical size for a 40 watt laser. So that wasn't going to work for me. I had also talked to some people who own lasers and they cautioned me against getting something in the 40 watt range. And these people do, they build models, they uh, cut stuff on a regular basis and do similar things with a laser that I would do. So if they're telling me not to get a 40 watt laser, then I'm gonna stay away from that. I wanna make sure that I have the capability to cut other materials that I don't cut every single day, let's say like leather or a really thick wood. Uh, over a quarter inch. I don't really anticipate doing that, but I want to make sure that I do have that capability should I ever want to do anything like that. So I think those are good things and talking to anybody who has experience with a laser is a good idea just to get some feedback for you. Now another option or one step up are these 60 watt lasers that you can buy on eBay and they have a much bigger bed but they also require a lot more space just to store them. So I think you need to consider the amount of space that you have to work with and where you're gonna put your laser. The 40 watt lasers are considerably smaller than my machine, and they also don't have a bed that can go up and down where mine does, and that was a requirement for me. And I also wanted the ability to have a rotary tool so I could engrave things that were round. I don't know exactly what I'm going to use that for or when, but I do want to have that capability. And also with the 60 watt lasers, those were significantly bigger than the laser that I have. And I considered shipping how it was going to get here. And then my shop is in the basement. So I need to be able to get it down my stairs and into my shop. And so that was another factor for me. So the 50 watt, worked out great in the sense that the wattage or the power was enough for me to do what I felt that I was going to use it for and still be able to get it into my shop. Uh, I think that's definitely something you don't want to overlook. These machines can be big and you want to make sure that you have enough space to put your machine in a place where you can access it. Other features that were super important to me for the laser was network ability. 
The 40 watt lasers that you buy on eBay generally don't come with a network connection and my machine is in the room next door to my shop here and so I want to be able to talk to it with my computer, send the files there. I don't want to do the sneaker net thing where I'm taking a USB drive and plugging it in. So I needed to make sure that it was going to work with my computer and have all Macs. And so that was going to be a hurdle until I found out about this light burn software. So I bought a copy of that and I've been really happy with that performance and it also works with my machine. So if you're going to use it on a Mac and you're going to use this Lightburn, make sure that it works with the machine that you're going to buy. Lightburn supports a whole bunch of machines and is always adding new machines, but make sure that they support your controller and mine was supported so that made my decision that much easier. Now, one of the other things that nobody really ever talks about is this air assist. And mine has an air assist, meaning it has an air pump. And it pumps air right by the nozzle and kind of blows out any flames or uh, anything that could potentially catch on fire. A lot of these 40 watt units that are a little smaller than mine do not have air assist. And the air assist is maybe something that you don't absolutely have to have but it's certainly going to extinguish any flames as your laser is traveling around cutting stuff out. And I think it's a really good thing to have, and I'm really super glad that I uh, got that on my laser. Uh, it's not was not my number one concern, but uh, it's definitely a good thing to have. It makes the machine a little bit louder. I'm not super crazy about that, um, but I think it's a must-have to make sure that you're not having any fires or anything like that. So definitely a good bonus. The other last thing that I considered with my machine was a machine that's easily modifiable. And you'll see I've already made a couple of changes and mods to my machine. And from what I understand, these tubes don't always last a long time and it's just a matter of time before they go and you need to get a new one and you'll probably just get a bigger, better one than what you have. And my machine is easily modifiable, at least by me and by my standards, so I'm not too worried about that. I purchased my machine on eBay. I spent about 1300 bucks, and my consideration was that I wanted to buy it from a local US seller. All these machines seem to be more or less the same, and they seem to be made in China. The reason I didn't spend maybe a few dollars less and get it directly from somebody in China was that I wanted it from someplace here in the US. I assume that the machines come from China, and then they're all stored in a warehouse someplace and check to make sure that they're good. So to reduce my chance of having a broken machine that arrives here, I wanted to buy it from a US seller. The machine is also very big as you can see here. It was freight shipped and I had it shipped to somebody who had a dock. So if you wanna ship something like this to your house, you need to consider there's gonna be an extra charge because they will charge you to do a local delivery in your neighborhood and it'll need to be on a truck with a bed that goes up and down. And many of the people that sell these lasers, they will have a separate eBay listing for purchasing this. So in my case, I purchased the freight separate, but I didn't need a dock and it came to my buddy's warehouse and I was able to just barely fit it into my car. You can see this picture right here. I mean, just by the skin of my teeth did it fit in my car. I then had to unpack it out of the crate, totally disassemble the crate uh, and even take parts of the machine apart uh, or out so I could get it in and I needed help to get it into the basement. So all things to consider when you're getting one of these lasers. To get the laser finally set up, you need to make sure that it's by a place that has a vent, right? So there's a fan inside of one of these machines. I think the fans are a little inadequate for what they do, but it'll work to get you started. So you need to be by someplace, a window or something where you can mod your window and have the exhaust fumes go outside or to some sort of a scrubber unit. Uh, that cleans the air. If you don't have that option, you'll need some sort of a scrubber unit and that could get costly as well. So my unit worked out of the box. I don't know what other people's experience was, but I had a pretty decent experience. My unit, I plugged it in, plugged everything uh, up to it, the, the air uh, assist, and mine also has a water 
uh, cooler assist. I think the I think they all have some sort of water cooling. So you need to cool the tube with some water. And I, mine has a water pump, and I use some antifreeze inside of my water here just to help keep the temperature regular. And I'm going to plan some other mods here, and I'll cover that in a little bit. So you need to make sure that you have room for all of this stuff when you set everything up. Um, mine worked the first time, literally software networked the thing together, sent a file over, cut out a piece of paper. First time, I was pretty impressed. Things worked out pretty good for me. I did have one issue with the machine. I noticed that when I closed the door on the machine, that sometimes the power would kind of go out on the machine and I thought, oh, this is a big problem or whatever. And I actually wrote an email to the seller on eBay and they were fairly responsive and they asked for some video, which I created of uh, what happens when I close the lid. So I could close the lid and I could get the thing to sort of power off and I could slam the lid again and then it could power back on. I sent them this video. They asked video of the controller unit, which is the uh, unit inside the box you can see here. Uh, what happens when you shut the lid so they could watch the little LED lights and that's how they provided some basic tech support. They claim that the safety switch was defective and they sent me a new one and I replaced it. This is the apparently defective unit. I haven't had any more problems since then. I replaced uh, with the one that they sent me and I'm up and running and uh, haven't had any more issues since then. Let's take a look at what I did to my machine. I think the first thing that I did was add uh, an amp meter to my machine. So from watching uh, other YouTube channels, particularly this one channel called RD Works, uh, this guy is crazy in the sense that he is an absolute like laser perfectionist in the sense that he knows a lot about lasers and does very, very in-depth tutorials. I'm assuming that anybody who's purchased a laser uh, pretty much has seen this fellow's videos on YouTube and I'll even uh, add a link below so you can check out his videos. So I learned a lot from him just about basic laser maintenance and what to sort of expect before I got it. Very, very helpful and thank you very much, my friend. So the first mod I did was to add this milliamp meter and this shows me the current flowing to the tube. And according to uh, the RD Works fellow and many other YouTubers, you don't want to drive your tube past a certain current draw. Uh, it'll start to burn out the gas inside the tube. And so taking this fellow's advice, I bought one of these milliamp gauges and I installed it on my machine cut a hole right into my brand new machine, hooked up the uh, milliamp unit, ran some power cables. It's all very accessible through the side panel here, very easily modded, So, at least for me. So again, that was one of my criteria, so super easy. Now the other thing that I'm installing on my machine is a uh, temperature sensor and I bought a 12 volt temperature sensor with a gauge that's used for a car I haven't hooked it up yet I have all the components for it here basically a 12 amp uh, 12 volt power supply and I will wire this thing up and add the temperature sensor on the output of the water uh, in my tank uh, where the water is circulated so that way I can measure the temperature of the water coming off the laser and keep an eye on that should be fairly straightforward mod to do uh, I don't know how other people are measuring the temperature of the water but this is a pretty simple one uh, that I think most people uh, that understand the concept of how a temperature sensor works in a vehicle or a 12 volt system should be able to hook up I think that the fan inside of this unit is a little underpowered and I also don't like the fact that the fan is in the unit basically blowing the air out of the unit and then out of my vent uh, in my window. I would much prefer to have a vent fan like this like I have on my spray paint booth where it is drawing the air out at the exit point. Uh, where it vents outside. 
Also a fan like this would be way more powerful than the fan that is included in the stock unit. Um, and you can smell uh, the burning, particularly with wood or any sort of plastic that's uh, questionable uh, with the stock fan. So that is also something that I plan on upgrading here in the very near future. Uh, but again, an easy mod, uh, but thing to consider, you're going to probably spend a little bit of money and time modifying your machine, depending upon what you're going to be using it for. Right, so that pretty much covers it. I've made a bunch of tools, used it for all kinds of stuff already. It has fundamentally changed the way I approach model making at this point. You can see several of my videos here in the last couple months where I have had laser cut parts. I haven't really talked about getting the laser or what I went through. I wanted to save it all for this video. But in terms of repeatability and precision, the laser cannot be matched. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. I can make a perfect square out of a piece of acrylic or any sort of material. If I want to change that dimension by one millimeter, I can easily do that by a couple keystrokes before I would have had to cut that out on a bandsaw and sand it and measure it. All that stuff has just been eliminated with uh, a laser. Uh, the duplicatability of components and parts uh, and the speed at which it does it uh, cannot, I cannot say how awesome that is. It's so amazing and how much work it is sort of reducing on my end just for model making and model building. If you're a student and they have a laser where you go to school, you should learn how to use it. Uh, you can make your own tools. I've made a video about that. And just for model making in general, uh, repeatability, it's easy to change something as a vector art and then uh, cut it out, put it together, see if it works and then make small changes and do that over and over until you get the part right. For model making and general prototyping, unbelievable, just a fantastic tool. So hope this helps you pick out a laser, get the right one for your needs. Uh, I am so glad that I got a laser. Uh, I can't imagine not having one at this point. Just a fantastic tool and I think the cost is absolutely worth it. Uh, so good luck to you picking out your laser and using your laser. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.